Hello and welcome to the Project Wise Administrator Advanced Accreditation Course on Enhanced Environments. This is part three of three part series for the dynamic and triggered attribute section of the course covering the use of SQL stored procedures. In this section of the course, we will cover the use of SQL stored procedures and Project Wise attributes for submitting input values to return a specific output value. The benefits of using SQL Store procedures are is a standard SQL Server scripting technique, supports all available SQL commands and functions, there's no character limits in the code as with using SQL statements, and it allows for more advanced complex processing of attribute data. During this course, you will learn where the stored procedures are stored within the SQL database, how to add a stored procedure to a Bentley hosted ProjectWise implementation, review a sample of a stored procedure included in the ProjectWise server installation, understand what attribute properties support stored procedures, and the syntax used to execute a stored procedure. Now let's look at where the stored procedures are located in the SQL database. Using SQL Server Management Studio to access the database, Stored procedures are stored in each SQL database. So when implementing a stored procedure, it must be added to each database that the stored procedure should be used. You can see the stored procedure is located in the programmability stored procedures location. The highlighted stored procedure is the one that is delivered with the installation of ProjectWise. For adding a stored procedure to a Bentley hosted ProjectWise implementation, follow these steps. Develop the stored procedure within the own environment. After testing, save the stored procedure to a SQL file using the script stored procedure create to file option within SQL Server Management Studio. Submit a support ticket with the stored procedure file attached. Specify which data sources the stored procedure is to be added. The MASS team will review the stored procedure for approval. Once approved, then they will be implemented into the data sources requested. Let's look at a stored procedure using the WRE increment version number stored procedure that comes with ProjectWise. A stored procedure is simply a SQL Server scripting language that's going to run a function based on input and output. The purpose of this stored procedure is to increment either the major decimal value, minor decimal value, or to remove the minor decimal value from a version number. As we can see in this stored procedure, in the alter procedure, the name is WRE increment version number. There are two input values, operation, which is up to 16 characters. And in this stored procedure, the only valid entries are INC underscore MAJ, INC underscore MIN, and remove underscore MIN. The second input is the version number, such as P01.1. This is commonly used in the implementation of ISO 19650 and the change revision number command and workflow rules engine. Reading further into the script from the begin statement, the script declares variables that will be representing the major revision number, the minor revision number, the prefix value, Additionally, it will create variables for the new revision number and the sequence. Next, it will parse the current version number that was passed as an input and assign each part to its appropriate variable. As we go through the code, it will process the request based on the operation that was submitted. The last line on this image is if the operation is equal to increment major, we go into the second part of the code, we can see where it will set the next sequence 
with a plus one. It'll check to see if the sequence number is less than two digits. If it is, it'll put a prepending zero, and it automatically adds a decimal one to the ending version number. Next, if we increment the minor number, passing the inc underscore min, it will go through the same process. However, it's incrementing the minor version number. And lastly, if we pass the operation, remove underscore min, or the minor revision number, the code will truncate the decimal and minor number. You can also see there is a hidden operation called void. If void was passed to the store procedure, it will change the prefix to a V and return the version number as it was submitted. As with SQL statements and described in the previous video, the store procedure is entered in the properties of an attribute using the select option for default values, value lists, and update values. When choosing the select type, the label for where the code is entered will still show SQL select statement. This is the entry area for executing a stored procedure. Now let's look at the syntax or structure for executing a store procedure in ProjectWise. The store procedure syntax is an execute command passing one or more input values. For example, the exec command is entered passing the name of the stored procedure and any subsequent value that the stored procedure is expecting. For example, when using the store procedure provided in ProjectWise installation for incrementing the version number, passes the exec command, the name of the store procedure, wre increment version number, passing the inc underscore maj in quotes, followed by the current version number, p01.1. The value that is returned when this is executed should be p02.1. The second example is passing the inc underscore min operator. The version pass is p01.1. The return value should be p01.2, incrementing the minor version number. The last example, we're passing the remove underscore min and a version number of p01.1, so the return value to the attribute to be p01, removing the minor number. In this exercise, we will be using a common stored procedure primarily used in an ISO 19650 implementation. The main use of this store procedure is to return user initials in one of two formats so they can be stored in attribute related to an ISO 19650 workflow action such as submitted by, approved by, and rejected by. Here are a few parts of the store procedure we'll be working with. First, we'll execute the store procedure name, which is ISO 19650 underscore action underscore names. The function is to return the initials of a username in a specific format. The attributes we'll apply this store procedure to are submitted underscore by, approved underscore by, and rejected underscore by. The input values for the store procedure first is a string representing the username that can be up to 32 characters. Second is a trigger. The number one is used to request initials to be calculated. If any other value is submitted, the stored procedure would return dash dash dash. The third input is the format we won't return. We submit a T to return the user's title block format, which is their first initial followed by the last name. If we submit the I 
the stored procedure will return a user's standard initials, which is just the first initial, last name initial. The syntax we'll use for the three attributes is exec, the name of the procedure. The first value will use the system variable user.name. The second value will pass the trig underscore submitted attribute value. And the third value will submit the T request in the title block format. All three attribute execute commands will be the same except for the triggered attribute name. For submitted by, we have a trigger attribute called trig underscore submitted. Approved by is trig underscore approved. And rejected by is tri g underscore rejected. Now let's make this change in ProjectWise Administrator in the My Company environment. Log in to ProjectWise Administrator, go to the Environments tab, My Company, Attribute Layout, Standards, and Attributes tab. Double click the Submitted by attribute, click Values. For the Update Value section, choose Select, enter the Store Procedure Execute command, which is Execute ISO 19650 underscore action underscore names user dot name environment variable and the edit trig submitted and T. Click OK. We only want this to update when the trig underscore submitted attribute is updated. So click on the three dots, find the trig underscore submitted and add it to the triggered attributes. Click OK. Apply and OK. Now repeat the same for approved by and rejected by. Ensure that the trig underscore approved is the attribute value being passed for the approved by attribute. Now that we've added it in ProjectWise Administrator, let's switch over to ProjectWise Explorer and see how this works. Now I've launched and logged in to the data source using John Doe account. I'm looking at the properties of the plan sheet. And if you notice the submitted by, approved by, and rejected by are blank. These are actually read-only fields, so you cannot type information in here. Now to demonstrate this, I've unhid the trigger attributes on the more attributes tab. So if I change the value of the trig approved to one, if we switch over to the attributes tab, we see the title block initial has been entered for the approved by and the date field also. If we go back and set the rejected to any other value than one, and go back to the attributes, the store procedure is entering the dash 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 as previously described. Now you've successfully applied a stored procedure for an attribute value. This concludes the third part of enhanced environments for dynamic and triggered attributes using stored procedures. Let's review what has been learned. During this course, you have learned where stored procedures are located in the SQL database, we reviewed a stored procedure that is included in the ProjectWise installation, understand what attribute properties are supported by stored procedures, and the syntax to use to execute a stored procedure. The next section of the ProjectWise Administrator Advanced Accreditation course will cover use of document code and code restrictions within a ProjectWise environment. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.